Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing as Danny the Demon using only melee weapons, and we are on death mode on an expert world, and we've got lots of good stuff to do this episode. Last episode, we defeated Astrum Diaz, and who else did we fight? Ah, the Plaguebringer Goliath. It's been a few days since I filmed because I got absolutely demolished by allergies. So I did some yard work. I wanted to plant a bunch of stuff and oh my goodness, it destroyed me. I was outside like all day. I planted a bunch of evergreen trees and a bunch of flowers like hydrangeas or hydran. How do you pronounce that? I don't know. <laughs> but I also planted a bunch of like shrubs and such and it was really fun. Um, but then like I had such a bad allergic reaction to everything. I don't know what the deal is, but like I could hardly breathe, my eyes swelled up, and it was like probably about 36 hours just feeling like terrible. Um, but I'm feeling maybe like 80% better now, so that's good. I need to stay away from outside for a little bit because whatever's in the air right now is really getting me. So this episode I want to start off by defeating the lunatic cultists because they're gonna give us the ancient manipulator oh no that just got frozen that was scary i need something that can home this boss is actually kind of tricky in um death mode gotta kill that dragon I always spawn so many dragons. I really don't even know if I'm landing hits right now. I'm a little loopy still, to be honest. Getting really bad allergies. I don't know if any of you guys get it where it, like, it affects your brain. And it's like you can't think straight. And everything's kind of foggy. For some reason, when I have really bad like uh, allergies like that, it makes my brain kind of all scrambled. Well, we're at 49%. I'm missing, like, <laughs> most of the hits here. Uh, oh, well. He's missing his hits, too, so we're fine. Uh-oh. We're in space. Oh, I did a bunch of stuff in between episodes. I need to talk about that. I forgot. I had farmed a bunch of stuff. Because I missed a few things. Like, ooh, we might get some adrenaline. Oh, my goodness. I missed the Leviathan drop because Leviathan drops a sword and I wanted to pick that up. I also missed the Influx Waiver and the Crimson Key. So I went ahead and got those and now we can do all the cool stuff with them. I don't know how I'm dodging that stuff so well. Like when it all splits into like vertical and horizontal projectiles, I'm not really trying to dodge it. It just kind of worked. But yeah, so I got I got those items. They're all pretty simple to get. It's just not that exciting since we've already done all of those events. So I just went through and quickly farmed them up. And the Influx Waiver, I think, has an upgrade. Well, it actually has two, technically, since you can upgrade to the Zenith. But we can also upgrade the Influx Waiver to, like, a Trident, which is surprising. So I'm very excited to try that. All of that we'll be able to do very soon once we have this ancient manipulator. We finish doing our little circles around this guy. Once again, those didn't hit me. Amazing. This weapon has got to be one of my favorite weapons at this point in the game. It's carried me through so many bosses. There we go! The Ancient Manipulator. And I want to grab some Meld Blobs before we go back to base. Maybe we'll just defeat this so we can get these little Meld Blobs. I think we can craft a sword with them. I did a bunch of research the other day, try to figure out what's, you know, stuff I should be doing in this point in the game for melee class. I've also been reading the comments and getting some good suggestions. Like, one is that I should probably craft the Celestial Shell since that's so good for a melee playthrough. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that soon. I think I got all the stuff for it. I just totally forgot about the Celestial Shell since I usually use uh, Calamity accessories for the most part. It's weird that we don't see the, the boss bar for the pillars. I did change the boss bar because a lot of people have mentioned you can turn it off in the settings, just like I did with changing the health bar for my character. It's very cool that you can switch between health bars so easily in the interface. Uh-oh, better use a heal. Oh my goodness. Survive, Rito, survive. Oh my gosh, three health. I had three health. <laughs> oh, that was so close. So I've got my grand gelatin right here. Um, that's one thing that I want to upgrade into the absorber later. And they've got the crimson key. Oh, I totally forgot. I farmed Leviathan and on like the second boss bag, I got the community and it dropped as a warding immediately, which is quite exciting. Here's the influx waiver. This is one of my favorite vanilla swords. Whoa. This is really cool. I think it's just true melee though. And then we can place our ancient manipulator into our crafting section. I don't know if I should switch the community on yet because I know it gets better as you go in the game. It seems pretty decent right now. I love that they've added it where it explains what it does because I think a few updates back when it used to have a different sprite, it didn't really say what it did and you had to look it up online. So the first thing I want to craft is this Tenebris Tides. And then we need to craft Astral. Whoa, we got a lot of Astral bars. But yeah, we've got an Astral Pike. So let's craft that and then an Astral Blade. Do that one. Might as well craft some Astral Hammocks too. Oh, and we can craft Astral Armor. I don't know if it's going to be better than Beetle Armor, which is something else we have access to right now. We've got our Hydrothermic Armor. So let's compare 127 and our damage is 223 so our defense went down by four our damage went up by like 10 it's actually pretty good whenever you crit an enemy the fallen hollowed and astral stars rain down Ooh, now we can craft the true biome blade oh yes it's just the upgrade to the biome blade core of calamity with astral and life alloy excellent so here's the weapon i was thinking of the entropic claymore so that's another one. We are already, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six weapons we've gotten, plus a new armor set. I think the next one that I need to craft is the Majestic Guard. And it's just the upgrade to an adamantite or titanium sword. So I think we've got enough titanium. Let's just craft that and we can craft the Majestic Guard. We can craft it into the Grand Guardian. So this requires life alloy and solar fragments. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but you can switch between all recipes and the available recipes. So sometimes if I can't find what I'm looking for, I'll switch to all known and then I'll type it in. Ooh, deific amulet. I didn't realize, oh, it requires astral and sea prisms. That's like one of the only things that I think uses sea prisms. And then we've got the absorber. Looks like we have, oh, we've got the claw carapace and the giant shell version. Everything else is the same. It's the combination of the grand gelatin, fungal, giant shell, giant tortoise shell, rover, and then the stuff from the abyss and the sunken sea. Oh, and we can craft the celestial stone, craft the celestial shell as well. Whoa, this is a Wolfram Acrobatics pack. It changes the way hooks work. Oh, that's so cool. It's like in um, Super Metroid where you swing on your rope, or in Donkey Kong or whatever. I mean, I guess there's a lot of games that use hooks like this. That is seriously amazing. I don't know when they added this. Is this recent, or has this been here for a while? Oh my gosh, this is so fun. <laughs> and it doesn't um, change the fact that my hook should like teleport me. This is super fun. I need to get this early in my next playthrough just so I can swing on platforms like this and fight bosses. That'd be a fun way to fight bosses. Okay, I'm getting so sidetracked. 4,500? 6,000? If you land these hits, it like explodes. It's like the influx waiver. Oh my gosh, so cool. 
Whoa, true melee is like 8,000. <laughs> this one's also quite good. And we've got the Astral Blade with the cool effect. And Grand Guardian. Striking enemies causes a large explosion. Striking enemies that are under half life will cause them to release rainbow bolts. It says it lowers enemy defense by one with every strike. And if the defense drops to zero or below, your attacks will heal you. There's a lot of cool healing effects on this. And look at that sprite. Okay, so let's try this claymore. Oh, I see homing. Yes, amazing. I might use this on the uh, Moon Lord. Yeah, this is great. Homing is amazing. Ooh, the Biome Blade. You can actually do normal attacks with it. Oh, we should attune it to whatever biome this is. Whoa, that was cool. Whoa, is this like... Hollowed attunement? Oh my gosh, this is so cool! <laughs> this is seriously amazing. This would be like the perfect AFK weapon for... You throw like a Zerg on and just hold your attack down and walk away. Whoa, and it shoots the sword at the end. That was so cool. Let's see if I can get that sword to shoot again. Yeah, wow. Like a flail at the end. That is seriously amazing. I love it. Okay, well, let's just run through here. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Like, I could throw Battle Potion or Zerg on and be totally fine in here. Wow. I love it. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. <laughs> this is the ice one? Okay, I gotta check this out with a dummy. That is really quite powerful. The only problem is if you're in this range, it doesn't do much damage. You gotta be like pretty far away where the whips can hit it. Very interesting. Oh, and a lot of people have mentioned that before I fight the Moon Lord, I need to fight the uh, that boss that I had mentioned a while back. It's like a special boss from the Catalyst mod. I really want to make sure I fight it. So I'm definitely going to keep that in mind. I don't know if I'm going to get to it this episode, but in this episode I want to defeat the Ravager, Duke Fishron, and maybe the Empress of Light. I am absolutely loving this weapon. It's so satisfying. Don't have to aim, don't have to do anything, just run around and kill everything. It's almost like a summoner weapon, just with like how passive it is. Whoa, I like instantly killed that. Okay, I should really try some of my other weapons though. I've been <laughs> too enamored by the Biome Blade. Whoa. We got a Titan Arm. That's cool. Just a really fast sword. Oh, I forgot I still have a Zerg potion on. I was wondering why this pillar was absolutely crazy compared to the other ones. Well, we'll go through this really fast. Okay, well, I think... Is this our third pillar or our second? I think this is our third, so we need to be careful so we don't fight like the solar pillars, the last one. I don't want to break that pillar. So I went to the steampunk NPC so I can change this desert biome into some astral whatever, astral desert, and I'm going to clear all this off, and oh, I don't think those are those look like corruption trees okay I gotta do a little bit better on this okay we've got it all switched it's the Hadarian wings that's what I'm looking for right now ooh there's the enemy of the Hadarian they will drop the wings um, they used to drop like a item that you would craft into wings but I just looked up on the wiki and I think they just dropped the wings now and I think they're, they're some of the better wings in hard mode. And you can only get them if you have a desert. And I have spent way too long farming this item. It's probably one of the items that has taken me the longest to farm in all of Calamity, other than maybe like the uh, elemental in a bottle, like the special one. I think that one I've spent like an hour farming with like Zerg or something. 
Oh, and if you notice, there's a ton of honey everywhere. I should probably take care of that because I um, wanted to prepare my world for post Lord content. And one of the things that I dislike the most is having Sky Islands in my way during boss fights. Well, at least this is a good way to level up our melee proficiency. I'll want that at the max before we get to some of the final bosses. Man, I wish they'd bump the spawn rate on these Hadarians. But we just got the wings. Okay, yeah, definitely Zerg is the way to go for this. And any type of farming, really. Cool. Well, we can turn that Zerg off. Head back to base. Well, we actually got two Hadarian wings. I really need to clean up my ocean. It's always a pet peeve of mine when my ocean is, like, blood. It just looks bad. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be so much better. Like, the damage we're doing is way better now. Not to mention we've got some pretty good flight speed. Plus some better accessories. Yeah, this is great. Thank goodness for the Lunatic Cultists and their Ancient Manipulator. It really is a lifesaver. Go ahead and use some adrenaline. Got rage building. I love that rage builds without taking hits now. Okay, let's use rage. Ooh, I know. Let's get this sword going. Take that, you fish. We got our little bubble mace, the Flareon, and we got the rogue weapon, we got the tsunami. We are pretty overpowered right now. Maybe I will fight it again though. Doing some damage. Okay, let's get this sword swinging. Take that. This is so good. This is like my favorite way to defeat the boss at the end. Just dash around like crazy and let that sword do passive damage to it. Oh, we got the fish run wings. Menacing. Okay, we gotta compare wings now. The only thing better about Hadarian is that you can go really fast horizontally. I like that fish run wings have so much flight time. Like we can fly all the way to the top of our map. That's pretty awesome. Well, I feel a little bit silly now farming that Hadarian stuff for so long. And I know I don't need to, but let's go ahead and just fight the boss once more just so we can get another chance at that drop. So I really want to see that sword. We could also just buy boss bags, but I'd rather just fight them, save some platinum. This <laughs> is so easy. <laughs> I love it. There we go. Still no sword. Okay, well, let's just open them like this. It's actually a good strategy. There we go. We used a lot of platinum. But we got four pairs of fish run wings. I, I just loaded with wings. I got two Hadarians and four fish runs. And here's our briny baron sword. So this spawns a tornado. Oh, and it's it's got homing right click attacks. So now I think before we end this episode, I want to fight the Ravager. Usually this fight is a bit simple by the time we get to this point in the game because we've got so many good weapons. Oh, you want to see something cool? I turned this into like a little spaceship. I can't believe I still haven't broke these. Let's go in and break these. But yeah, now this is much smaller and we can run around it a lot easier. I noticed I don't know if it's like vein miner or something, but it's not every time, but when I'm like breaking walls, sometimes it will just like, it'll be like vein mining, but for walls. I think there must be like a setting that's changed because I've never had that happen before. Okay, let's fight. 
fight this Ravager. I remember, I think it was in the Silas series, that this was slightly more difficult than previously. But I'm not 100% on that. Might have just been my loadout. I feel like this loadout is not going to have any trouble. As long as we don't get hit by those walls, we are good. Ah, we got our adrenaline taken back to zero. Okay, well this is going quite well. We can keep our distance and do plenty of damage. I find with this boss, one of the things that you want to do is when you do fly, you want to fly straight up. Like, flying diagonal can be a little bit risky on this boss. There we go. Because those things um, up here and then fall like those walls. Oh, this is the part that's tricky, where he goes like all crazy on you. Yeah, basically you don't want to go horizontal because you can hit into those walls pretty easily. I really like this song. It's probably like one of my top songs, like maybe top five. We almost got rage. There we go. I bet this guy's gonna drop a sword. I seem to remember he dropped a pretty cool sword that I've seen in some of my playthroughs. Oh, but of course we get the magic one. Um, oh, we got the fleshy geode. All those resources. Oh, and a Ravager relic. Doesn't really look like the Ravager. So we got Infernal Blood. Permanently increases the duration of rage by one second. Amazing. And the Blood Pact, this is quite good. It doubles our max health and it allows you to be critically hit. Well, I think that's a great place to end this episode. We've got so much good stuff. This is probably the episode with the most upgrades of this series so far. We've got new armor, new wings, like three new accessories, not counting the Deific Amulet, so four technically. And we've got like six, seven, eight, I don't know, maybe even more than eight weapons. We are ready to go to fight the final bosses before the Moon Lord. And then we've got the Catalyst Mod boss, which is like a mega boss for hard mode. So I'm excited to see how that fight goes. Lots of good stuff coming up. We're going to definitely jump into all that next episode. So definitely stay tuned. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe. I also have lots of other Terraria series with lore and everything. So check those out. They're mainly Calamity, but there's a few other mods in there as well. If you're enjoying this series, you'll probably enjoy those too. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.